the water from the city of Worcester drains into the Blackstone River. And what we're looking at here is actually not even the river. The river is over there a little ways. This is part of the Blackstone Canal. And that's what turned Worcester from a farming community into an industrial community because they were able to transport things on the canal from Providence right up to Worcester and down again. So the things they made, they'd send down and they could bring in raw materials up. Uh, unfortunately, the canal was built just a few years before the invention of the railroads. And so they, it only lasted about 20 years. And then the, uh, and actually we just crossed the railroad tracks. So the railroad tracks ran right along the canal and they replaced this. I'm going to introduce you to uh, Mr. Eugene Bernat, that's the head of the Fisherville uh, Redevelopment Corporation, and they're trying to make this right and turn it turn it all around. And I'll let him explain from there. So just to, to add to what your teacher said, um, basically the importance of the canal, the river, and the railroad is it's what turned Worcester from not only a farming community into a, an industrial community, but one of the richest really the richest areas in the in in the United States and in the world. What we have in the Blackstone Valley and the Blackstone River and Canal is basically the outflow pipe from every industry that was ever built here and, and continues to be. So every single house, every single business, all of them discharge to the upper Blackstone wastewater treatment plant. That plant does its best to process the water, but you wouldn't want to drink what comes out of the back end of the pipe at the wastewater treatment plant. It all ends up down here, and there are materials in that wastewater that are still hazardous. Antibiotics, antivirals that come out of the hospitals, there's other um, soaps and detergents that are endocrine disruptors that cause birth defects, that uh, cause problems with fish growth, all of those things. And not only does it affect us here, it affects the entire system of the river, which includes the Narragansett Bay. So the Narragansett Bay receives all of this water too. So in general, what the whole concept behind what we do here is that there is no more away. It used to be the, the concept was, well, we can just throw it down the pipe, it goes away. You know, and where we can just throw it and bring it to a landfill, it goes away. There's no such thing as away anymore. So we have to figure out ways, if we're gonna have a sustainable future, and to turn waste into valuable products so they're no longer waste and they're no longer negatively impacting the environment. In the canal, what we're trying to do here is we take water from the canal that has all the oily sediments, all of the dye stuffs that have been deposited on the bottom of the, of the canal, all of the suspended solids and organic contaminants that come out of the upper Blackstone wastewater treatment plant, and we process that using plants and animals and we turn it into drinking water quality uh, water and return it to the canal, along with a biological load of microorganisms that are like an, an inoculation. It's like the river is getting a shot in the arm constantly every day of beneficial bacteria and organisms that are also taking this cleanup and expanding it because it's flowing, those organisms are flowing with the river and canal water from here down the river. What we are doing is we started out with a lot of different cultures of mushrooms and we planted them in a sterile environment and we started introducing the contaminated water to it, we found that we were achieving better than 95% reduction in the oil concentration come from coming out of the canal to where it leaves the micro-reactor bins. So each one of these bins you have to look at is like a micro-environment, and each one of them is a bioreactor of very simple design. Now, any mushroom that's living on wood, which is decomposing and surviving on wood, in theory, has the capability to break down oil. Today we had a chance to come and actually see the Eco Machine uh, here at the Fisherville Mill. When I heard about this system right here on the Blackstone River, I said, we've got to get involved with that. So in fact, um, we have received some uh, mini grants from both Massachusetts Agriculture in the Classroom and the Greater Worcester Community Foundation and we're going to be building a scale model of this back in the classroom. And that will be a living laboratory where we can teach the students about aquatic biological systems, 
Um, they'll have the aquatic cells, we'll be growing mushrooms, uh, we'll probably be growing some worms in there, and just looking at a, a whole new range of ways of uh, treating water and recycling using natural systems as opposed to chemical uh, methods. The Living Systems Laboratory, which was founded about three years ago, is a consortium concept of a number of different stakeholders from area universities including Brown, Clark, Tufts, and WPI, as well as non-governmental organizations like Mass Audubon and the Blackstone River Headwaters Coalition and the Heritage Corridor Commission. Together, we've come up with a concept that allows us to use a treatment plant as a tourist attraction. So what we're doing here is not only cleaning up the water, we're turning lemons into lemonade. We're taking that contamination and we're trying to use it as a cultural asset in the form of a teaching tool. So we're creating a location where art, science, and culture mix and where the past, present, and the future of the Blackstone Valley meet. This particular system is designed to be open to the public and we're trying to do everything we can to attract the public in ways in which they be can, can become informed about very important environmental issues and social and cultural issues as well. So we provide tours on a request basis to any, any party or any group that wants to come and take a look at the system. We're also seeking a grant that would allow us to put in interpretive uh, signage that would allow a self-guided door to occur. This trip is, is important from Sudan. One of the things uh, that I realized today, of course, you know, when our students come here, they are required to have a notebook and write down what, what you learn. But I saw a couple of girls actually very, very interested that probably the, the students that are going to come back here and prepare some uh, uh, projects uh, for science fair or for other activities. This is what we want. We want uh, the new generation, our students in environmental science and technology to be prepared for 21st uh, century challenges.